All right, run that. <clears throat> All right, guys, welcome to another Journey to 30. We're talking about top lane today. But before we delve into that, I just want to say, Pwn, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Who? Pwnophobia is with us. <laughs> Mr. T Force himself. Yeah. The guy who set this all up and made sure that you could do the podcast. Mm -hmm. or, well, I guess it's more of a video cast at this point, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. The guy who made you get that fancy little 30, burning 30. It looks the guy so who set good. It all up. Bow to me. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad really <laughs> you guys have been doing this because it's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time that is the journey to 30. However, I just have not had the time to put it together. Plus, yeah. I usually. Talk. I, you guys have to reel me in because I'm definitely going to talk too much and I'm definitely going to talk in a broader than 30 cents. So That's ah, okay. We're, we've gotten rather good at this uh, entire spiel. This is episode 9 for those of you who are keeping track. Um, keep me up to make sure I'm right. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Episode 9. But anyway, um, real quick, let's just talk about what we talked about last also, week. Also, uh, hold oh, on. I'm here too even though Asdurin <laughs> did not introduce me. I didn't introduce that. myself either. <laughs> You don't need to introduce yourself. You're talking. <laughs> Eventually, people just get used to your voices, much like I don't even introduce the cast anymore. I'm yeah. just like, yeah, we're here. Let's go. Yeah. I just feel left out. <laughs> All right, so, fine. You want to talk about what we talked about last week? Go ahead. Take it away. <laughs> no, no. It's, I don't care anymore. I'm oh, done with oh, this. Oh, no, okay. last week, we talked about support. That was a great show. Uh, we had Days Untold mm -hmm. and uh, Odd Lawn Gnome. Yeah. Actually, and, my uh, roommate. They, yeah. They helped us out. They did a great job, and we were happy to have them. Yeah, so if you uh, feel free to go watch that again. Remember, all of these are on the YouTube channel, which is right there. Oh, no, it's not right there. I need to get that on there. But, yeah, www.youtube.com forward slash T-Force podcast. They're over there in the playlist. We make sure we have that. Also, someone made some just fantastic thumbnail art. I don't know who oh, did that. I don't know who did that either. It was. It's great. Oh, oh yo, the actual thumbnail art? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I don't know who's doing that. I think it's one of the guys. I think it's uh, uh, Haberdashing. No, spoil spoiler alert, it was me. It was him. <laughs> oh, well, Haberdashing was making some awesome ones for uh, Bronze Boot Camp and stuff, so sorry. Yeah, uh, and that's not my... You, you can tell how connected I am with everything that goes <laughs> in the back end. It's pretty awful. <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, I love mine. Fucking Leona. It's great. Okay, I though. You make a good Leona. I would make a good Leona. You're right. She's my favorite champion. But yeah, Leona t support talk. There's, you know, go watch it again. There's a lot of talk in there. It's an hour long cast. There's a lot of good stuff. Please, please go talk about support. We talked about support first and foremost simply because it is the most underrated uh, role, and we want to make sure you guys are respecting every single role and their ad like advantages to a team. So. Please go watch that again. It's uh, it's an amazing cast. But we're going to go ahead and talk about champ rotation before we fully delve into the uh, top lane. And this week we have Ash, we have Irelia, we have Jinx, Lux, one of my favorites, Morgana, Shivana, Thresh, Twisted Fate, Vi, and Zed. So who are we saying uh, to, to play this week as uh, beginning champions? Uh, I'm just going to say for bot lane, Ash is a pretty easy ADC to wrap your mind around. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. And um, I definitely will recommend um, Lux. You know, she's really fun and she's a good champion to learn skill shots with simply because she has three of them. So it's a, it's a, she's a good champion. She's just, she's also just really fun too. I think right now, if you're going to play any of these free, free week champions and you really want to jump into the mid or support role, Morgana is the best choice. You pro she's probably been free week in the past, and you guys have talked about her, but she is just such an easy, straightforward champion to play that the only thing that you can screw up on that champion, unlike most of the others in League, is the fact that you dropped Black Shield on the wrong target. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love Morgana. She's a lot of fun. Yeah, and she's really, like, like, said she's really straightforward to understand um and she has some really cool skins so if you're beginning to play the game and you're looking at like oh who looks really cool morgana has some pretty nice skins but and i also throw out vi in there um for some of you junglers you know you're just getting into the hang of uh jungling vi is a really solid jungler she has great clear great ganking and just general presence all around um she's definitely a menace out of the jungle so i definitely recommend vi as well she actually just got a skin devin your vi i like it too 
There we go. Yeah. All right. So let's get right into the top lane talk. Um, first and foremost, Pwn, what is top? Why Why is top important and, and what is the top lane? Oh, wow. You just tossed me right in here and make yeah. me go for it. Yep. All right. So the top lane in League of Legends is the lane that um, is currently currently in the meta is reserved for tanky champions or players who want to have a one-on-one. -on -one. They're... Uh, to play in the top lane, you need to realize that you are on an island. Now, you may have heard people talk about that before. It's because there is only one way to get to that island, and that is from the river. Well, I mean, I guess there's two. You can also come from the turret side. But for the most part, when people are playing to start out, they're going to come from the river to gank you. So you have a very easy time up there. It's unlike mid lane where you have two or three or four different paths to come and gank you. So sitting up in top lane, it's a very one-on-one -on -one centric fight. And... Because of that, it becomes one of the trickiest lanes to play, but one of the easiest at the same time. Because easy, because early you can bring a lot of champions that duel very well up in there, and you guys have talked about dueling in the past. And you can also you can fend for yourself, and you are the you know are the win you are the reason that you win that lane. Yeah, yeah, agree. Yeah, top lane is is really important because you're by yourself, um, and you need to know how to play the lane to the best of its abilities. So this uh, this this is kind of an important role for it, its own kind of factor. You're learning a different kind of play style, and like each different role has, I guess, its own play style. But but top's especially special because there's so many different ways to play it. You just need to understand how. I would say waves and and lanes. Uh, the the way minions work is top lane's probably the mm -hmm. the the most important thing. Yeah, Before right now in the top lane, um, it is learning how to control the enemy player. Like I said, I'm going to keep saying this the entire time that we talk about top lane, but it really is your one-on-one -on -one lane. So if you're that person who really goes into the game and wants to test your skills one-on-one -on -one and you think you can have a champion that just does better than another champion, just try to take it in the top lane. Do it in normal game, please. Don't do it in ranked. But, um, to, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Top lane is about wave management, understanding when to push the wave, when understanding when to hold the wave where it needs to be held, and understanding when to zone an opponent away from that wave, or uh, forcing that opponent to miss CS by pushing the wave under the tower. It all and that's because there's so many different matchups up there. It takes a very long time to understand that. So if you were gonna go, if you were first going to learn top lane, I would learn matchups and understanding the one-on-one -on -one basics before you learn how to push or pull waves in your favor. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point right there. So, okay, so real quick, because you mentioned it, and you know, I kind of mentioned it as well. So, primary goals of top lane. What would you say is one of the you know the the three most important things to know when you're when you're deciding to to start you know working in the top lane? Um, three three most important things to bring in the top lane would definitely be a. Uh, Matching, or excuse me, champion knowledge, understanding what each champion does. So if you run into any odd picks, which are outside of what people are normally playing, you'll be able to fare well into that champion. Understanding your champion very, very well, ins and outs. If you are a Poppy main, because that's the side, that's the character you side you like, you should know Poppy and every single scenario and matchup that you could possibly think of. And number three is understand that you are again, you're on the island, you're by yourself, and if you get a gank, you should just be happy the jungler's up there. If you lose your lane, it's because you lost your lane. It's not because the jungler made you lose it. Yeah, yeah. We've said this a number of times. Don't yell at your jungler if, if something bad happens. Don't yell at your teammates if something bad happens. Yeah, that's just good policy. Yeah, I mean, and I'm I, I can't say that I have never yelled at my teammates before. I mean, we all have done it, but it's just usually like it's just better if you just keep your mouth shut when something goes. There on. are definitely times where it is your teammate's fault something went wrong or some or or something is lost or someone is being stupid, but it's just it's better policy to shut your mouth and yeah. not say anything. Mm -hmm. I just like to point out I've never yelled at anybody because I'm Canadian and I'm far too nice for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. All right, so um, before we you know get more into you know details. Um, you know, a lot of people get it all the time too. I I know with the the email that comes in, you know, can I play this person as a support? Can I play this person, you know, as a jungler? So, what do you think dictates a champion as a solid top laner? Not as someone that you know could fare well. I mean, someone that's like legitimately, like, what properties of a champion are necessary to succeed in the top lane? Right now, sustain. 
Okay. Some some form of sustained makes top laners what they are. People will ask, can I play Sejuani up in the top lane? Can I play um I'm trying to think of something. Can I play Zed in the top lane? Can I play this? Can I play that? Absolutely. But some kind of sustain or shield or range is what makes a good top laner. It's all about dueling presence because the lane is so long, you need to have that threat all the time of zoning the enemy player. And But you also need to have mobility because the lane is so long that if you push up and someone ganks, you need to be able to make it out of there. So that's why right now we're seeing a lot of Renekton. Uh, we see Renekton, Gragas... Who else am I thinking of? Shivana would work. It works there because she has a speed boost. Mundo works well because he's super tanky. And all these carries I'm talking about have a piece of their kit that either regens life or gives them a movement speed increase to get through the lane more quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I, I agree 100% on that. Um, you know, when you're thinking about choosing the role that you want to go into when you hit 30, um, mechanically understanding a champion is definitely. A must but knowing that you can stay up there for longer than just a few seconds even if you get pushed down a little bit or poked down you know that's that's definitely necessary um, and remember this, this is all preparation for you guys when you hit 30 you know so you may not be at the point right now in your journey to 30 where you're having a solo top laner and somebody in the jungle just know that eventually that time will come you know come the late like 20s or 25 you're gonna start getting people that are starting to jungle more and this is kind of what we're talking about the top lane we're not talking about oh you're teemo malphite top because <laughs> there's no jungler this is specifically solo top lane at level 30 the meta which we talked about a couple episodes ago right yeah early on it might be viable to play a squishy immobile champion top lane but once you get a little farther and you're the only one up there you're not going to want someone like that you're going to get blown up pretty quick well the big thing is Yes, Teemo does very, very well in lane, and yes, he can be a fantastic top laner. The problem comes into the mid game and the late game, which I'm sure you guys have talked about in the past, in that you need to be ready for team fights. You need to be ready for that presence at Dragon. You need to be ready to duel anybody that comes up into your lane. So while Teemo is great one on one, he lacks quite a bit in the team fights. I'm using him as just an example because he seems to be a pretty stable top laner between lower ranks because mm -hmm. he's so easy to play and there's other champions that are just like that and a lot of the other champions that you could take up there i saw twisted fate the other day you are wasting their potential because you don't they don't have as much of the map to use as the other players so if you're thinking okay i can play twisted fate he has poke he has sustain he, he has mana sustain he has uh you know defense but the stun card so i won't get ganked and now i have my teleport well if i bring twisted fate into mid lane i actually cover more of the map and I call I am more of a presence on the map where if I brought him to the top lane I can only cover half the map mm -hmm. so you have to think about that quite a bit if you're looking at what these champions can do and why you want to bring those champions into certain lanes for top lane like I said it's a one-on-one -on -one dueling presence it's a you're on an island you need to bring sustain a shield or some kind of movement increase up there where you know that if you were left alone for 25 minutes when you were picking a champion just say to yourself if i was left alone for 25 minutes what would happen to me and that's how you can pick a top lane champion yeah and i mean of course we'll always recommend that you guys try champions out and be like well i kind of want to try this person in the top lane and and, and of course we de definitely recommend that because you don't learn unless you experience it you know the best way to learn is through experience so if you want to try twisted fate in the top lane feel free to mm -hmm. try it just remember that you know what we're saying is definitely to help you guys out so you know don't take us for you know word, word isn't law yeah but at the same time definitely heed what we're saying about this as well all right so so yeah, you, that's kind of the fun part about playing early is a lot of crazy stuff can work pretty well. Just keep in mind that as you get better and you start to rank up, then those crazy strats and silly picks in different places are maybe going to start to fall off. Yeah, definitely. All right, so um, just real quick, we'll talk about teleport because it's probably one of the most, like, next to... Well, it used to be heal, but like the most important summoner for a top laner usually was teleport. And we just want to talk about teleport real quick because it's something you get at the very beginning. You know, you'll have it throughout your entire journey to 30 and teleport is specifically important for the top lane. 
fun thing I was thinking about teleport on the way and my drive home tonight and something I wanted to specifically touch on and spend some time on is what separates a good and bad top laner might not necessarily be the champion they choose, but the summoners that they take. Mm. So mm. I could go up there. I could take heal barrier. I'm going to sit there all day, every day and never die. But what am I going to accomplish with that when it comes to mid and late game where suddenly my team decides they need that extra person down in the bottom lane. So here's how teleport works right now. I don't know. You guys haven't talked about split pushing or talked about how to properly do that. But you will see as you level up that some people want to go off in their own lane because they're like, I can one be one anybody or I really want this farm. What teleport allows you to do is to be more selfish with your play. And while you're being selfish, you're actually helping the team because you could be off pushing that top lane and then a fight breaks out in bottom and suddenly it's a 3v2 fight because you have teleported yourself down there. And that's what makes a top laner so good right now is that mobility thanks to summoner spells to make or break a top laner in every single elo across this board is how you use teleport. If you can effectively use teleport and you secure yourself three assists and that enemy did not take your top lane, you are now leaps and bounds ahead of that enemy. You could probably duel him when you walk back up to the top lane. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And um, real quick note on teleport. You guys all know what it does exactly, but do remember that if you are teleporting to lane, while it is a long lane to teleport to, just make sure that you know other lanes are okay before you just randomly decide to teleport back to lane. Because, teleport to your tower. Yes. No matter yes. what, no matter how far the lane is pushed, teleport to your own tower because the cooldown is reduced if you teleport to a tower. Mm-hmm. And and for and since you pointed it out, no longer like it doesn't matter how far the lane is pushed. If they're pushed to like if your wave is pushed to their turret, teleport is it would be wasted on teleporting up there because by the time that you were to get to the lane, it like walking the lane would probably be almost to your turret or getting really close and probably even balanced out. It'd probably just reset honestly. So don't teleport to your tower. Don't teleport to your lane. Unless it, you're, you know, you're starting to notice that it's pushing to you, and you need to get there immediately, rather than, you know, I could be there in 20 seconds because teleporting to your top lane is just to stop it from going down. So you also need to keep in mind what the enemy is. Have you, you guys have talked about summoners and how enemies have played whichever summoners, correct? Uh, hey. for the general most part, we, I, we, I mean, we kind of covered summoners, but um, not, not all that. We haven't much. gone too deep into it yet. No. Right. Because I, I, want, I did want to uh, mention that part of top lane, and this is to take it to like the next step. You've hit 30, you've understood, you kind of understand top lane, you're, you know, you're learning wave manipulation, is also learning how to um, force the enemy to do something advantageous for your team, like force the enemy to burn their teleport somewhere. And that's something you guys will carry on later is understanding how to force an en- manipulate an enemy to do something for you. But if you're really curious of why top lane is so fun, you might think right now, okay, it's an island. Why is this fun to duel? Well, there's a lot of mind games that go on that lane, which is on par to what I would say bottom lane is. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We, you know, we haven't really touched on um, summoners simply because a lot of the stuff we just talked about were more broad. But t- teleporting the top lane was something mandatory that I felt like we needed to talk about for sure. And, and I guess uh, kind of along those lines, uh, not not an instance where you would use teleport, but is there any times where, as a top laner, you should roam, like maybe down to mid or into the jungle? Top top lane is also a lot about roaming and helping out the um, helping out your team. You need to be you need to be aware of what your team is doing and what the enemy team is doing at all times. And this gets that really gets into a higher level strategy. But if you feel like you continually push the enemy to their turret and you can, there's nothing you can do but die because all you would do is dive them, you know. Uh, you could leave your lane and walk down the mid, ping that you're going to help out the mid laner, and then after you help them out, walk back up the top lane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there, there is a lot of strategy, and I say that gets a little too in-depth for this episode of Journey to 30, yeah. but do note that there is always something you can be doing at every point in this game, even when you think that there isn't. Yeah. Yeah, just because you're on an island doesn't mean that you are stuck there until that turret goes down. Yeah, you have a boat. Your engine works. Just jump in it and go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, I mean, we talk about it every single time, but wards. Uh, most important places to ward as a top laner? Buy a pink 
if you're on red side, ward your tribe bush. Yes. If you are just walking with your normal ward, just ward the river bush. Just drop your weight. Uh, when you first go to lane, wait for the wait until the like the three twenty five mark, maybe three minute mark, and drop a ward in your river bush at that point because the jungler should be coming within the next twenty to one minute, twenty seconds to one minute from either of those points. From I said from what I say three three twenty five. So at, just, just the, a good rule of thumb is walk up there, let a wave a wave and a half come by, and then go drop your ward. Mm -hmm. uh, and that allows you to have enough vision you feel like that you can play you feel like you can play aggressively and if you don't feel that you need to drop that ward because you're paying attention to the mini map and you notice the jungler is spending his time in other places you can use that ward to ward the bushes in top lane because what makes top lane different than all the other lanes besides bottom of course is the um, is the bush placement and a lot of people like to sit in those bushes and harass you from them while getting CS. Yeah. So you can actually ward one of those. Um, you you <clears> mentioned <throat> it for a second, um, and now I, 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 I briefly lost my train of thought, the, but I'm trying to The pink ward it. in the, the bush? No, it was... Um, oh, the importance of warding and being aggressive. You know, we talked about trading a, a few episodes ago, and trading in the top lane specifically, um, and when to trade, and, and we talked about when you feel safe. This is probably one of the most important times to ward and then trade is to know that you are completely safe you're not in threat of getting ganked simply because like you said you're by yourself you're not in the mid lane so it's not the shortest lane there's also less of a chance of getting collapsed on should something happen right. so in the top lane warding before you go aggressive is incredibly important and i wanted to touch on that real quick because i feel like it's something in like i said really important to specifically the top lane well, for the top lane, the top lane needs to know where the enemy jungler is all the time. So while you are working on all these fundamentals and you're listening to these old versions of these VODs, um, you need to look at map awareness and you need to be paying attention at every point in this game. When, when you are, as you are leveling up, you'll realize that at about 6 minutes and 30 seconds, roughly 6 minutes, 30, 7 minutes, the enemy jungler is going to be walking back in their jungle at that point. So any time between 155 or two minutes and six minutes and 30 seconds, that jungler could be anywhere else on the map, including top lane. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a four minute span there that you need to be aware that if you go aggressive at any point in time during that um, four minute span, that you could get counter, you know, you could get countered because the enemy jungler could walk in. So when you are looking at your character, you need to decide Okay, I understand Renekton inside and out. I understand at level 3 he can go aggressive because he has all three of his abilities. I mean, anybody can do that, but Renekton for this example. I am now going to ward. I now have one minute of near immunity, demigod status immunity, because I, can, I have flash and I can pay attention when to jump in there and when to trade. But it's all about understanding where the jungler is at. That is the only way that top lane trading really works to your advantage and how you, the, you, you turn the island into a king of the hill mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to be difficult for you guys to keep track of, of where the jungler is at, at um, you know, given points. And when we talk about jungle, you know, we're going to talk about times and, and all that different stuff. Uh, I don't want to cover it too much, but, mm -hmm. you know, just a good rule of thumb for right now while you're, while you're, you know, ranking up and you're not used to a jungler is just, you know, you know, talk to your jungler and find out what he's doing. And that can give you a semi general, you know, look at the jungle and, and what you think the enemy jungler is going to be doing. And on top of that, you may just be utterly confused at all together. So just keep <laughs> yourself warded, and that should be generally be enough at the lower levels for you to not get ganked. So if you just right. keep it yeah. warded, you don't need to know, okay, the jungler's grabbing his blue at seven minutes because that's what <laughs> junglers do on red side at seven minutes. You don't need to understand that. All you need to know is that that ward's down and that Lee Sin hasn't popped into my area yet, so I'm good. And that, and that will help you get a better understanding as time goes on with, with um, top lane and making sure you're watching the map. But Yeah, that's why we hammer wards into your guys' heads so often. Vision is such a critical, important part of this game. It, it doesn't matter what position you're playing. Like If you have vision, then you have got a degree of safety, and you, are, you're, you can go in, you can get aggressive. It's Man. just so important to keep that vision up. It's incredibly important for the top lane, too. It's something that I noticed immediately benefited my top lane was knowing that I can be aggressive. Just the fact that I know I can be aggressive without you know getting countered 
is is made all the difference in the world whether or not i decided to go in on that you know you know what's funny about top lane is i think out of all the other lanes top lane gives you a sense a spidey sense of when the jungler is going to show up after you play a hundred games of it you just suddenly go, I think the jungler is going to show up now. And what's going to happen is you're going to go, I think the jungler is going to show up now, but I'm going to get this next wave. And I am now dead. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sitting at plat three and I still tell you it happens to me from time to time because I get a little cocky. But you develop more of a spider sense the more you play the top lane because you don't get a chance to go back in nearly as often as the other lanes because you need to save that tower top lane tower is so important for you to keep up because of the teleport because most people run teleport now we did talk about teleport there are times where you want to take ignite in the top lane that those times are when you know you can secure a kill either at level three or level six and you know that you can keep up that presence the entire time and you don't think you're going to leave that top lane more than to maybe help a team push something at some point like you at that point when you take ignite you are a dueling god mm-hmm. that is what that is what you were going in there as you you were you have it in your mind that i'm going to win this lane i'm going to heat that guy out with the threat of my all in and i'm just going to zone in from the creeps or i'm going to kill him and take the tower down really fast and just be a menace yeah yeah and you know we didn't we haven't really touched on ignite all that much because it's something you get i think it's one of the later ones that you get um ignite. Uh, level yeah, uh, level. Flash is level 12. Flash is level 12. Ignite, I think, is 10 then. Um, but yeah, Ignite is definitely really strong. For those of you who are unaware, Ignite deals true damage based on your level over a certain amount of time. It also reduces the amount of healing that uh, that person receives through pots, through any sort of regeneration. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty good. And it's really strong if you are intending to kill somebody because their, pots aren't, their health pots aren't going to do anything to help them in a duel. And if they are any sort of healing champion like Maokai in the top lane, which you just recently talked about, or anyone like that that has some sort of heal, Renekton, Mundo. Mundo. Um, It completely counters that heal, and it allows you to take them down effectively, which is why Ignite can be really good in the top lane as well. Okay, um, so, you know, let's quick talk about the first 20. I was going to, sorry, I I was was coughing. (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to keep the coughs out of the podcast by muting my microphone. Uh, I do want to point out that a lot of you are probably going to keep Ignite and you're going to play with Ignite to start out. And I would I was going to say start with Ignite when you play in the top lane. Don't start with Teleport because Teleport is too hard of an ability to use when you're first learning how to play in the top lane. Get a sense of how it plays, how lane management works, how trading, how zoning, all the stuff that you guys have talked about in the previous eight episodes. And bring Ignite in the top lane to be that secure or your safeguard. Because I guarantee starting out from 1 to 30, 32, bronze, you know, 2, you're not going to effectively use teleport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. It's building that map awareness early on, even like remembering to uh, regularly look at your mini map is hard to do when you're learning. And if you if you're not looking, you're not going to use your teleport and you're basically just wasting that slot for your summoners. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I really like, I'm, I mean, I'm a huge fan of teleport in general because it gives you so much pressure uh, everywhere. You know, the threat of teleport being up you know, the enemy team just knows that there's a possibility. You just have to pay attention, though. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time... You have to be watching the minimap. You have to be moving your camera around. One of the things that I find an advanced tactic for this is a lot of times you'll actually not even be looking at your lane. You'll be looking at somebody else's lane for a half a second to understand what's going on in the bottom lane. Oh, they're engaging. I need to go down at this point. So you can realize why vision and minimaps and understanding all of that is the next step after learning champions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's tough to get out of that tunnel vision. Like, you... I even find myself still doing it where I'm so focused on my lane or what I'm doing or who I'm up against that pings are going ignored and like, oh, crap, there's a team fight over there. I should probably go help. <clears throat> All right, so I want to touch on the first 20 minutes of top lane because I feel like um, in the top lane, establishing you know control over the lane is one of the more crucial parts in it's a really difficult and hard to understand. Uh, it took me a while to fully grasp it. But you know, what the first you know the first time you're going in the lane, what kind of mindset do you have, and and what what things are you focusing on the most? I'm going to focus on not dying first and foremost. I think going the top lane, your mindset should be, I will not die. That's agreed. That's, that is it. 
That's it, I, number one rule. Don't die. Yeah, don't die. Like, it doesn't matter if you get a kill. It doesn't matter if you are behind on CS, unless you're down by like 50. <laughs> uh, but, you know, everything else that you could worry about, just don't die. The number one thing I ever got told when I started to play MOBAs back in the day was, in Dota, which was way harder than this, was if you are low on life, just walk back and heal up. It doesn't matter if you're below, behind in levels. It doesn't matter any of that stuff. You not dying is the biggest impact you can have in this game. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's kind of why, you know, um, running heal at lower levels is really good, or even barrier at lower levels. Mm -hmm. but that's yeah. the importance of having, again, those sustained champions in the top lane. If you, you know, if you go in and trade, and you even if you come out ahead, but you have no way of sustaining, and your opponent does, well, the next trade you go in, they're going to have more life than you, and they're going to whittle you down. So it's, again, focus on playing safe. Don't put yourself in a bad position to get some CS. For God's sake, don't chase into the, under the tower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Especially early. Just just do not die, like like Pone said. Yeah, there's no, there's nothing worse you could do in this game than dying. Honestly, I mean, I don't care if you're if you are AFK in the base, you're not dying. <laughs> <laughs> but All like, right. that's I, that's that's the number one rule for yeah. top lane. And then, and what else are you like? I, I CSing, of course. But um, when do you like? So you said Rennington level three, but as kind of a general um, guideline, when do you usually start trying to trade with your enemy top laner? Level two, level, level two. one, actually. Honestly, a lot of my champions are. That's a lot of this comes in into to wave manipulation and understanding because you can hit level two before the enemy, but let's assume that you don't know that because you're listening to this and you don't. You know, sorry to be blunt, but. Um, you want to start trading around level two with a lot of champions. Some champions can trade at level one. If you are ranged and the enemy champion is melee, trade at level one. You need to be trying to weave your auto attacks in between the last hittings. Mm -hmm. And that's that's next level. That's like tactic. That's next level after you learn how to last hit really well. You go to the next level now where you are harassing and getting last hits. So the enemy has to decide if they want to take that hit to get that CS or, you know, or vice versa if you want to get that cs to get that to get hit mm -hmm. so w weaving auto attacks in understanding that range champions have an advantage over melee champions and then when you have two melee champions you need to look at what your abilities do what when i go in as renekton and i w them attack them q them and gain life back is that worth my time to do that am i going to eat harass as i walk away from them because they have more long range abilities than i do so that's how you have to do a risk reward type management in your head with any champion that you go against. So um, top lane in particular, I notice is, is kind of a big deal because there. I mean, I think the only uh, recommended champion we have that is ranged is Teemo. Oh, we have Rise too, but um, Teemo works. On that note, you know, there's a there's when you go into trade, there's going to be a threat of gaining aggro of minions. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you, the the minions start to attack you. Um, let's because I we haven't done it yet, simply because top lane is probably the most important. Talking about when to trade, you looking at the minion wave. I kind of want to cover. If the minion wave is equal, as in there is one wave on each side, you are more than likely free to trade. If the minion, if they have a full wave to your two waves, it is not a good time to trade. It is basically looking at the number of people you're going against. You wouldn't run into a battle one on ten. So why are you trading with an enemy when they have a full minion wave in front of you? Yeah, because, you know, minions are definitely a threat. Don't ever underestimate minions simply because they're smaller and, you know, they're easy to kill. Minions will do damage to you, and you got to watch that. I had a trade, I think... Recently, I was top lane as Teemo or something like that, and I took 500 damage from minions. <laughs> 500 yeah, that... damage. That was my fault. I was drunk, and I was standing in the middle of the minion wave, auto-attacking <laughs> the enemy, and I deserved to die because I wasn't paying attention to minions. And that is something you need to understand, especially with champions that we're going to recommend. We're going to recommend Teemo. We're going to recommend, you know, Ryze, who at the earlier levels doesn't have nearly as much health as he does later. But I'm only going to recommend Ryze if you're smart casting. I'm assuming you guys went over smart casting, right? Um, no, we haven't. Oh, wait. Yes, we did. I was going to say, I'm, gonna say, uh, I'm I pretty sure I heard that episode. Or I feel I like we did. 
Did we? I think oh, I, I know I mentioned know. smart. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I mentioned. So, well, okay, real quick rundown. Smart casting is where you take out the middleman click. All you do is press the button assigned to whatever key, and it immediately follows your cursor and does it. So, for example, Timo Q, his blind shot. Um, if your cursor is over the enemy champion, you press Q. It will instantly, if you don't hold it, it will instantly go to that champion. Don't have to right click or left click. Right. I haven't done non smart casting in forever, so I don't even know what you <laughs> use anymore. You use left click. Okay, left click. Yeah. You don't have to left click after you press Q. It just goes. And we'll talk more about rides and smart casting in a little bit. But, you know, on that note, don't stand in the middle of a minion wave if you're ranged <laughs> and you're trying to attack uh, the don't enemy. Stand in front, don't stand in the middle. Yeah, don't ever stand, fight yeah. in the middle. Don't ever fight in minion waves. That is one of the biggest things that you can learn about playing top lane, too, is I keep saying minion management, but what comes in minion, minion management is that you are not taking the harass from the minions when you go and trade. You don't have to worry about that in the mid lane so much because mid lane trades are long range mm -hmm. while top lane are, and bottom lane range are, or bottom lane are all range. Top yeah. lane is pretty much the only lane where it's all melee yeah, all the time. Is, which is why I reserve this talk for, you know, for the top lane. Mid lane, you got really just spells and spells don't gain minion aggro. And in bot lane ranged, you, you're just you're not going to be within range of anyone anyway. So mm -hmm. don't fight in the middle of a minion wave, or you'll end up like dead Satan. I mean, dead Teemo. Dead <laughs> Teemo, yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, top lane is you know we kind of talk. It can be really boring at times because you may not get oh, ganks man. or top lane is one of my favorite lanes ever. <laughs> but there, there's going to be like times where you're just you know you're on par with each other or you don't really know if you can kill them but you're not really sure that they could kill you either and you could try and trade but you both come out even and stuff like that i've had that happen to me so many times what, what do you recommend when when you don't feel confident in either dueling them or your you know presence on the map because you're not running teleport and you just can't feel like oh, you hey, can roam? hey can i take a guess work mm -hmm. on your farm mm-hmm done yay well i mean what else, what else can you do yeah mm -hmm. is if you are up there you just you just did a trade you sliced and diced and queued and w'd and then they just malachi and they gained all their life back for whatever reason and you go well that was a waste of my time because i missed the cs and i took some extra damage at that point all you can do is farm and show the show the enemy that you're not afraid to trade with them though like you can never get comfortable in the top lane where you both are farming. You have to prove to the enemy that you're not afraid to trade with him or that he should be afraid that a gank could come at any time. So a lot of mind games come in top, but early on, don't. the biggest thing I see with a lot of top laners or people who decide to play top for the first time is they pick somebody like Master Yi who, if you listen to the Trinity Force podcast, I touted the merits of Master Yi top. But people pick him thinking they can just all in all the time. They're doing Me. damage just swinging a big sword. <laughs> I definitely and thought you, I could you, do that. You can't do that. Nope. You, you have to realize that there is an ebb and flow of how you move in top lane and how you have to you have to specifically play it in a manner where it's always adv everything that you do is advantageous for you. I traded with them. I am now ahead in life. I took a CS. They missed a CS. I took a CS. They went even to CS, but they took one trade from me. That's what you always should be looking for is how can I get the advantage against this enemy player because it's one-on-one, -on -one, like I said. Just assume you're never getting a jungle gank. Assume you're never getting ganked. What can I tell? Ask yourself, what can I do with this champion to get an advantage when they go for a CS? And if you try something and it doesn't work, that's a mental note that you're not trying next time. And if it works, try it again until it doesn't work and then figure out why it didn't work and fix it from there. It's much like it's, it's a game of chess, mm -hmm. moving and flowing and ebb and flowing and playing to your strengths and your enemy weaknesses. And we mentioned it in the CS episode that you're... Getting that farm, getting that gold is so important that if if you know your trades are are not really working out, or I mean, the most reliable thing you can do is to farm and give get yourself that advantage. If you're focused super hard on trying to you know you pick your yi and I'm gonna all in this guy the entire time, and even if you get a kill and he still got better farm than you, you still got the advantage. Yeah. Well, one farm is what you what is it? Thirteen CS, thirteen and a half CS or something. Yeah, it's it's about That's thirteen to fifteen, depending on casters, minions, and canyon waves. Right. But yeah, thirteen to fifteen CS is equal to a kill, so long as it's not a shutdown or a death streak. Right. If it's just a regular kill, so uh, you know, if it's not first blood, 
you know, if you're up 20 CS and they have a kill on you, you're still technically ahead. Yep. You're, you're te well, you're technically ahead, but you're not that far ahead. Mm -hmm. Like, you, it, that, at that point, it depends what point of the game it is, because it could be the difference between an item or no item, and that's only early and mid. But if it yeah. comes late and you're down 20 CS and three kills, it's probably not as big of a deal as you think it is. Yeah. Definitely, because there's global gold and, and uh, a bunch of other factors going in. So, <clears throat> what's some secondary objectives that you feel like you are, um, you know, trying to pay attention to, or things that you know you need to do when it comes to like the mid and late game? Like, what is um, your job when so depends. out of being out of the island? It depends what champion you're playing out of the top lane. Your job, for the most part, is to follow the enemy top laner around or force the enemy top laner to follow you around. Um, it, your job is to create pressure on the map so that somebody has to deal with you at some point in the game. I'm not advocating that you split push. Or Wait, that you can we talk about lane. split pushing real quick? Because we haven't actually talked about split pushing at all. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he mentioned split pushing, and you know we haven't ever talked about you know late game strategies or anything like that but split pushing is definitely a strategy in and of itself um and i'm gonna let pone talk about it because split pushing is something incredibly technical and don't ever ask me when you should split push because it's one of the most annoying like it's so difficult to know when you should split push or when you shouldn't split push um pone's got this dog real quick you just gotta shut his door but yeah go ahead throw throw split pushing under the bus because Okay, so we when you're playing this game, a lot of you, I keep saying island, 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 island. Well, you're going to think that that transfers into the mid and late game where you are still on that island. General rule of thumb, when your tower drops or you drop a tower in the top lane, whether it's the enemies of your tower, you should now be roaming the map and making something happen somewhere else. That's just general rule of thumb on how to play top lane, okay? But split pushing is where you sit in a side lane by yourself and you continue to push that side lane while your team does something else. But your team has to be doing something in reaction to what the enemy is doing to you. So if an enemy player sends two champions to stop you in the lane that you are, by yourself in your team has to respond to that by pushing toward an objective a tower a dragon if they're not doing that you excuse me you are wasting your time in the top lane by sitting there by yourself so to answer your original question split pushing is not a strategy to employ until later in the game when everybody understands how to play the game together because as you probably noticed in bronze or low level games people just kind of willy nearly run around it, it they could be <laughs> up 40 kills and still lose the game mm -hmm. Because people don't understand that objectives win games. Wards win games. And to drive that in your head and to become the leader and to take control of the team and understand how to push it forward is what's going to win you those games and make you have more fun at this game. You have to take an authoritative role. So playing the top lane can do that very well because you can say, okay, I took the top tower. Everybody needs to go down mid right now and push that and turn this into an Aram. Okay, I lost my top tower. Everybody needs to respond to this gank that is happening because this guy is continually I'm jumping up here and I can almost kill him with a little help. I could and we could take a tower off it. Does that make sense? Am I yeah. talking too quickly? No, no, no. You're good. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, but, we, but it's the authoritative role. It's the it's yeah. need to take, as a top laner and jungler, your, your number one goal is to take charge of the game. Uh, I'm not telling you that you always have to do it. That's that's end all be all. But if you want to success, if you want to succeed in top lane, take charge of the game. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, even in other in other roles, if if you're playing a game early on and no one's making any calls and everyone's kind of running around with their heads cut off, like don't be afraid to speak up and say, okay, we got to do this. We got a group, or we need to take dragon. Like even. If you're scared of making a bad call, at least someone's making a call mm -hmm. and you're not completely spread across the map getting picked off. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And and always work in tangent with your team, guys. Like if someone's saying you should do something else, like even if you think that you're and, – and other people are agreeing with him, even if you think that your idea to do something is better, you know, like, well, we could easily take mid turret because it's down 200 health, but they want to take dragon or something like that. You know, support your team over your yes. own wishes. Yes. Always. I I know it sucks. You are going to have to grit your teeth and bear it. My problem is I will play this game while intoxicated sometimes, and <laughs> my mouth will get the better of me. That is we, so... And me as well. <laughs> 
Um, you just and, and I've been getting I've get, over the past year. If you listen to any of our podcasts, you're, you'll hear me talk about how I got plat by finally just shutting up and it's not talking anymore and letting people do their thing. And once you just learn to grit your teeth and bear it, you'll find that this game is a is a little more enjoyable because what you don't think is right isn't always best for the team, or what you think is right isn't always best for the team. Yeah. Even though it's the right call, doesn't necessarily mean it's the best call. Yeah, and from a morale standpoint, if you're if you're yelling at your team and calling them names and stuff, like it's so easy for a team to just fall apart and everyone's busy arguing and you start dying. Yeah. It's you've got so much more of a chance of doing well if everyone's kind of pulling together. So if you are the one who's starting to make the calls or you have something to say, like try and say it in a way that doesn't make you sound like a douche. <laughs> Yeah, don't tell don't tell Snagglewolf to screw off and die because he decided yeah, to go and nice. the chalet. This is not nice. Yeah, you should be nice. All right, I'm Canadian. I don't take aggression very well. <laughs> so uh, we talked about it before in support, and um, we want to specifically touch on why people should play this role. Um, Pone, why do you play top lane? Because I'm gre- I am a selfish player, <laughs> and that's okay. First and foremost, always like if it's okay to, and mm-hmm. to if that's how you play, that's how you play, mm-hmm. and that's I, perfectly I, fine. I am a selfish player who thinks most players in this game are not as good as I am. I will admit that I am wrong. Uh, many, many, many moments in my life, I have been wrong, but that's just my mentality when I come into every game. I am better than the enemy player, and I needed a, I needed a place that I could prove it. I needed a place that I could be by myself and that I could show the world that I am as good as I think I am. And top lane fits for me because of that reason. Now, if you are the same style as me, try top lane. If you don't have very good map awareness, Top lane is surprisingly good for that because while we talked about teleport, you cannot use teleport and bring ignite and completely dominate your top lane and draw attention and just be that big beast, whatever you want to be, boss. raid boss style character and sit in the top lane the entire time. I'm going against everything we said. That's okay. It's, a, it's, it's, not, a, it's not the right way to play the game, but it's okay to do. But that's a strategy in of itself. Like, yeah. I mean, we could talk about how pulling the jungler to you and you not dying is just as effective as, you know, forcing the enemy laner out because now you've opened up pressure on the rest of the map and they know that the enemy top laner is, or enemy jungler is days away up in top lane. And that's a strategy in and of itself. But yeah, um, top lane. I think I. I mean, I agree one hundred percent. We we want to mold you guys into following your personalities when you decide to pick a role. You know, don't follow. We can talk it's, about champions it's, and stuff. But it's so surprising how much this game revolves around personalities. Yeah, it absolutely yeah. does. I mean, Dom, I, if you listen to the podcast, Dom is the analytical type. Um, he doesn't have the world's best mechanics, like. So he fits better in the support role because mechanics aren't as crucial as AD carry. But, but he has, he has amazing such a map great, awareness. He has such a great, yeah, map where just macro mind that he support fits him so perfectly. Uh, me, on the other hand, my mechanics are really good. And that it translates very well in the top lane because it's all about the little... That's why I also play AD carry because my mechanics are better than most people that play with me. Um you know that again. I, it's the whole tuning my horn thing, but I do. I have good mechanics. That's why I play those roles. Um, and that, but I don't have good. I will admit, I don't have good map awareness. I don't have good awareness of the time that things are spawning. I don't have good awareness of what to take and when to take it. People that I play with have better than I do, and yeah. that's why I fit so well in a team in the top lane. And you're and Pete, you guys, you know, trying out these roles, you're not going to know immediately where you think you fit. You should play the roles that you want to play and begin to learn all of them, you know, unanimously and getting a general gist of the game. But definitely know that when you hit 30 and when you're trying to decide what you want to main, you know, where you want to play in ranked or, you know, in a ranked team setting when, you know, when you decide to get there, it matching your personality is so significant. I can't tell you how successful I have seen people mm-hmm. Just because they're going in somewhere that it's just, you know, generally matches what they like to do. Yeah, not only are you going to get better, but you're going to have more fun. I mean, ultimately, that's what your goal should be is to have fun playing this game. And if you want to be that aggressive dude who becomes a monster and charges in and just starts killing everybody, top lane is probably the best spot for you. Yeah. Uh, (coughs) Couldn't agree more. 
So, um, recommended top laners. You know, last little bit. We got about 10, 12 minutes left before we need to cut this, and you can get ready for your cast. But well, a little um, shorter than that. But uh, okay. Yeah. Well, who who do you who do you explicitly? We can we can each talk about someone that we recommend up in the top lane. But let we'll, we'll you go first. For Choose. new players. Sorry that I'm silent and while I think about this. Top lane is just such a diverse pool. I would start in the top lane with Renekton or Teemo, even though I don't like Teemo and I don't like no, talking like about Timo. him. He is just such a quintessential top laner because he can always trade, he can always harass. When you want to move into tanks, Renekton is the overall just overall top laner because he does a little bit of everything and then he he's good just normally but he's better when mastered mm -hmm. because of you know you learn what his passive does where it allows you to uh, do extra things and you have more rage each of your abilities are empowered by your rage and another top laner that you could really learn to play and, and play it well is kennen i know uh, he's not kennen. in favor oh, at all kennen. love kennen he's one of my favorite champions he's but kennen i don't like kennen I don't think he's a good champion, but I think he's a good champion to learn to play because it forces you to learn how to harass in between autos. Oh my goodness. Or I, in between last hits. Yeah. And it also forces you how to learn how to zone with skill shots. Learns how to, it teaches you how to hit skill shots. For those of you that are 30 and you're trying to, and you're trying to find a, a champion that can counter any, any top laner with the proper amount of skill and the proper play, I 100% guarantee recommend Kennen. I have yet to lose in any matchup. I mean, I've lost matchups. Don't get me wrong. But I've played Kennen so much in the top lane that I can face anybody, including Arise, who pretty much hard counters Kennen. I can, I can face anybody in the top lane and be successful. I mean, I may still lose because jungler presence or anything like that, but oh, yeah. I know, like, to my skill, Kennen has so much versatility in his kit and his abilities that he can fight anybody. I've beaten Renekton, I've beaten Quins, I've beaten Teemos, I've beaten Trinomirs, I've beaten every mm -hmm. like good, you know, god tier top lane. Trinomirs actually person. one. Pick yeah, Trinomirs. Well, because he's way one. he's way more simple than Renekton, but he's also harder to play because you have to learn when to use that oh shit button. But no, I would say I would say go pick up Kennen. If I had to choose one out of all that I've chosen right there, I would say go play Kennen. Yeah, he's so fun too. I love Kennen. He's great. But uh, you talk about your boy guys. Gangplank or no? I don't play Gangplank Get anymore. <laughs> I love Gangplank to death. He's just not good. Um, well, I think we would uh, be remiss if we didn't mention Garen. Yeah, we he's, need to. Uh, yeah. I love Garen. He's one of the champions that I started to learn this game, game on, and uh, he's got a lot of what you want in the top lane. He's tanky. He's got sustain. Uh, he does a good amount of damage. He's got an execute, and just hide in a bush and spin, and that's all you got to do. Yeah. Also, yeah, wanna, Garen's a good one. I also want to mention Malphite and uh, Jax are both really good top laners. The only well. problem that I have with Malphite is Malphite is half a step above the other top laners, or behind, however you want to look at it. I don't care either way, but the, the reason I say that is because you are going to lose your lane early and you are going to be stuck under the tower and you're going to go, oh my God, please help me. Where is my jungler at? And he's going to be that character that pisses you off in top lane so badly. Same thing with Mundo that you're, you just are going to scream to high heavens for a gank and you're not going to get it. But then you realize that, okay, I've been farming pretty decently well. Oh, and now my ult just turned a team fight around. Yeah. So... I, I, the Malphite pick, play him. Good pick for turning team fights and using teleport properly. Like he, if you're gonna pick a champion to learn teleport on, learn it on Malphite mm -hmm. or Shen, or Shen. Well, Shen, Shen. No, I, I know Shen is like quintessential, quintessential top lane. He's just so hard to play properly. Yeah, I agree, but that's why we're not recommending Shen. But you know, learning how to teleport, laning against a Shen or as Shen teleports pretty handy with him as well. Oh, yeah, you have to run teleport on him because he could teleport bottom lane, come right back at the top, and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so, guys, we want to recommend, you know, Rennington, Malphite. Um, you know, we tossed Rise, Malkai in there, but um, I I haven't had – I mean, you guys recommended Malkai, and I think that's just due to his recent changes and him being skillful up there. But I think Malkai requires a different mindset in the top lane. It's much more of a push-heavy, you know – get that mm -hmm. tower down earlier than normal type of champion, which is a strategy, but to learn the lane. And this is what you want to do when you're, you know, we've talked about this before. On your way to 30, you're trying to learn 
the the game you don't want to win you want to learn like that should be your primary focus over everything else is learning everything about the game and then focus on winning you got it so i don't want to recommend maokai but i mean if you want to try him out he's fun he's one of my top five champions um garen kennen and uh timo for you, you guys. got it and so we're going to wrap this up again pone thank you so much for coming on and talking i know you're a busy man and you have a lot of works uh, things me, going sorry. on like <laughs> I'm having, I'm having, I'm having, I'm on the struggle boss right now, guys. Uh, and I have a podcast to do. I have another podcast to do in 20 minutes. Yeah, don't so. worry. You only got yeah. another hour of this to do. Yeah. <laughs> An so, hour of this, plus some streaming afterwards. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. It was awesome having you. I really, you know, you guys, if you guys are listening to this for the first time, you listen to Journey to 30, you guys have gone through, what have you gone through? Support, now top lane? Is mm -hmm. that where we started? Yeah, we're done doing mid lane next. Okay, and you guys are going to move on to mid lane. We're going to talk about ADC. You're going to talk about jungles. And you're, I'm hoping you're bringing on someone for each of those episodes. But yeah, this show right now and what everyone's been doing with the Trinity Force Network and everything is, is I, I hope that everybody out there is really learning something from these shows and is really getting a lot from Asterician and Snaggle. And I know you said, hey, thanks for coming me on, but I'm going to use this as a moment, as a platform to say thank you for starting the show and doing something that I've always wanted to do, but I've never had the time or the, or, or, or the people to do it for me. So, uh, you know, publicly, here it is from the boss, man. Thank you for taking this under your wings and guys and really running with it. Yeah, we yeah, love it. Thanks it's for giving us a shot, man. It's fun. I look forward to this it's awesome but okay, okay there we go the, the little little we can wipe our tears and hug oh, each other and thanks, pat each other on the ass after this point but yeah <laughs> guys i'm just gonna go ahead and use this because it's my show and i don't give a fuck is guys go check out the <laughs> trinity force podcast um i'm sure you started listening to the show because of the trinity force podcast uh the show goes live in 20 minutes that's mondays and wednesdays at 8 p.m eastern daylight time so if you're in the twitch chat right now stick around if you're watching this on youtube we are going to start working toward an mp3 version of this um i would say give us another like two months or so i've already talked to the guys about it uh, but we're getting there so yeah that's uh the look for big things come out of trinity force network in the next six months and feel free, guys, don't forget, email battlearena at trainforcepodcast.com if you're trying to specifically talk to Snaggle or I, or if you have a question for Pone and the guys of uh, T-Force proper, that is feedback at trainforcepodcast.com. I know it's not up there, but it's on the trainforcepodcast.com overall website. Um, and just in conclusions, next week we're talking about mid lane. I'm going to try and talk to DeClaude from T-Force proper and try and get him on here because I know he Yay. loves the mid lane. Um, I also love the mid lane, so I might we, have a little more we to have, say. Yeah, <laughs> we have three mid lane mains that could possibly talk, because I also main mid lane. So next week is going to be real fun. Uh, oh, so God, I get to talk about Ziggs. Uh, so you're going to bring Declaw on that? You're going to bring Chira on for jungle? Yeah, that's my goal. Chira for jungle, and then for AD carry. For I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know yet. I'm still, if you know any, like, seriously good AD carries that you've interviewed or anything like that. You need that, to bring Punchinello on the pod on here. Perfect. I play with Punch all the time, and I support him. That's a per So Punchinello will join us for AD carry. So it's going to go, for those of you who are curious uh, for the roster, it's going to go mid next week. A uh, week after that is AD carry, and I'm leaving jungle for last simply because that's, you know, that's one of the hardest things to talk about. So versatile, so diverse in everything that you need to know. So that, that jungle one's probably going to be like a two hour cast simply because there's so much <laughs> to cover. But anyway, that is the cast. So again, Palm, thank you for coming on. Does anyone mm -hmm. else have anything to say before we cut this loose? Go see Guardians of the Galaxy. It's awesome. <laughs> I still get to see it. I want to see it. Uh, all right. I need a jet. So guys, thank you. Thank you. Take it easy, guys. Uh, stay tuned for Bye. Deforce Popper.